Dispelling dangerous myths in health and wellness each and every Monday with Dr. Anthony G. Beck. Brought to you by Biohacker Labs. Warning, side effects may include more energy, deeper sleep, better memory, resistance to bullshit, and more cash in your wallet. Consult Dr. Beck with any questions. Welcome to another episode of Myth Busting Mondays with Dr. Anthony G. Beck and Larry Onyxana from Biohacker Labs. Today we're talking about a big one. So you know, at some point in life, we all faced with the problem, some sort of health challenge. And who do we go to see? The doctor. You know why? Because the doctor is always right. But is he? So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Yep, let's dive right in. Dr. Beck. What's happening? Yeah, you know, the thing is, is uh, I'm one of the few docs that will probably admit that uh, we're not always right. But one of the things I like to do with patients is always remind them that ultimately uh, your physician and caregivers work for you. You are indeed the boss, and that's the way you should always approach things. Uh, just like we go to any other expert in the field, whether we need something uh, repaired in our body and we want to go to the docks or we have something wrong in your house, we need to repair some plumbing or uh, something you know, along those lines and you, you seek a professional in that regard, we always seem to let them be um, uh, working for us and we're the boss, but somehow there's a disconnect when we walk into those lobbies and see those folks in the lab coats and stethoscopes. So one of the things I wanted to do is kind of let you realize that at the end of the day, uh, doctors are human. Now, some might you know, lead you to believe that they might be superhuman, but um, when it comes down to it, they're going to be a byproduct of their training mixed with you know how they're wired as people and that's just it they're people just like us so you always want to think of it in that particular sense I tell my patients that ultimately I work for them and I really want to encourage them to have a standard uh, that they hold both to me and to any caregiver that they actually have just like uh, when you're selecting someone to babysit your kids or get a nanny or hire some uh, one for your business you want to think of doctors the same way remember they are a resource and a tool for you okay now the the thing is is this is it really comes down to understanding uh, that doctors are a byproduct of a uh, medical history that goes back uh, many years back and one of the things that I like to talk about is how medicine over time has kind of lost its soul so one of my heroes and greats is a uh, Sir William Osler and he was uh, a physician who actually started Johns Hopkins uh, uh, Medical School and he's actually deemed the father of modern medicine so we think of Hippocrates being the, the father of medicine back in that day but now modern medicine is really um, attributed to Sir William Osler and he has a fantastic quote Quote that I always like to uh, stay grounded with and that's the fact that uh, he said two things number one is that he said if you listen to the patient they will give you the diagnosis so that's a, a pretty powerful statement and then later on he ends up you know saying another one which really institutes a, a cementing of that and that is it's far more important to know what patient has the disease as opposed to what disease has the patient and so when you get those perspectives right, you begin to understand that it really should focus on the individual and what makes them biochemically and genetically unique. And unfortunately, medicine today tends to be quite obtuse. And they look at the body as a whole bunch of other uh, separate systems that are just not related. That's why there's a specialist for every part of your body. If you have something going on downstairs between your legs, you got a doctor for that. If it's in your heart, we got a specialist for that. For your skin, we got a doctor for that. If it's up in your eyes, ears, nose, and throat, one for that. If it's in your brain, whew, we have a doctor for that. Well, the problem is, is they seem to have forgotten that they're just practicing what's called an acute care model. So in other words, when something breaks, we go to the doctor. Just like, you know, you don't call the plumber to come and check your plumbing on a regular basis, right? You wait till there's a leak and you call them. Well, the body's a little bit more complex than uh, electrical work in the house or plumbing or something going on in your car engines. We, we are far more complex than that. So currently, the, the medical model that's pretty pervasive across the globe 
is an acute care model. So something just happens in an instant. So it really is a sick care model. When you get sick, that's when you begin to seek some information. So off of that uh, acute care, we get things like emergencies. Man, if you're having a, a heart attack or a stroke, uh, we're gonna have to approach that a little bit different. Then you've got urgent care, you know, a little Timmy slips and you know breaks his arm off the bike, we have to go in for that. Or um, sometimes, uh, you know, we have a, a situation where there's a, some other type of an acute uh, surgery trauma due to a slip and fall or a car accident or something like that. But the problem is, is that creates a model to where when you go to uh, the doctor, so to speak, for a chronic disease, these are things that are long latency, they take a while to develop, uh, and these are things like heart disease and diabetes and arthritis, and then you have the, the syndromes like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia syndrome. Well, the problem with those diseases are they don't have a single causative factor. They are built upon uh, a lot more underlying imbalances that over time accumulate and present as that just the tip of the iceberg okay so when you when you take a look at things like over time if you uh, you were under stress and you started eating bad. So then that disrupted your gastrointestinal system. So now you have heartburn. So you go to the doctor for that acute thing and they want to give you a proton pump inhibitor or an antacid or just chew some Tums, right? But then the, the side effect of that is, is then you do that over time because you didn't correct the diet or the things that were actually causing it. So then now you're going to create uh, downstream effects through the gastrointestinal system where you're actually going to be suppressing the digestive uh, capacity when it comes to proteins or leaching minerals from the food that you eat because we're suppressing stomach acid for this original acute care thing, right? And then that flows downstream. And then so now you begin to have mineral deficiencies because your body wasn't able to pull them out of the food. And then over time, those mineral deficiencies cause other systems to be broken down. And I mean, wow, what a lot to be dealing with. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of times people are forgetting that in a chronic disease, in other words, something that's been bugging you for a long time, not something that just happened, you really have to take a different understanding and approach to that. But the problem is medical... Uh, and conventional wisdom today really doesn't differentiate the two. You go to see the doc, you get to see him for 7.6 minutes, you get to give the history of present illness, then they're basically going to say, well, how many people had this in your past and in your family? Oh, that sounds like disease, you know, uh, X. So we're going to start the, the name it, blame it, tame it game. And so they quickly are truncate it down, arrive at a diagnosis, blame it on your genetics and it just ran in the family and now we're just going to tame it with a medication yeah but at the end of the day it's all like just treating symptoms that's you're, it yeah you're yeah not, you're not really digging deep i mean you can really for in seven minutes that's kind of the faulty system that we have going yeah on. i mean and that's what i like to talk to my patients about and, and i say well you know you you you're going to enter into this treatment thing that and, you know that you spent what, just a couple minutes with a doc, then you go see another specialist, then they send you to do some imaging, maybe some labs, and then in aggregate, next thing you know, you have this diagnosis and this cocktail of medications that they want you to take or undergo this surgery. And if you really think about it, how much actual time did you spend with them? Maybe in aggregate, one to two hours, not including travel time to all these dang facilities that you gotta go to. But then we embark on a life-changing, uh, you know, uh, approach to a disease that we only had a little bit of time with a stranger but we don't do that in our relationship it's not how we pick a spouse it's not how we choose a university <laughs> right i mean we go on tours and talk and we date for months and then maybe cohabitate for a little bit and then maybe get engaged and all that kind of fun stuff which is another life-changing powerful institution but somehow our power of attorney we just completely wrote that off to anybody who has the the lab coat and stethoscope around their neck so um, kind of a broken model and one of the things that we also have to kind of laugh about so we can go oh my goodness I guess I do you know contribute to doing that is we see it in media and TV commercials all the time we've all seen this call your doctor today and see if drug X is right for you right and that's of course after they had this lovely advertising and marketing million dollar campaign select models having running on the beach or the lady having to stop at all the bus stops because her bladder is overactive and then over the years I've seen it you know go towards the cartoons and now it used to just be people now it's a person with a with a figmented you know like a black cloud falling over if you're depressed or you're holding on to your little you know uh, character little clown bladder if you if you need to go to the bathroom and urgent stuff so we're actually really working on psychological uh, uh, strings here 
to get people to go, well, yeah, I guess I do have fatigue. Let me go to the doctor and ask them about it. Because guess what? If you go to a doc and you complain about something, they feel obligated to give you the proverbial options. And it really boils down to a very small toolbox. And that is that little white slip of paper which conveniently uh, you got on all the corners of all the fast food places and just on the, all the other corners you actually have pharmaceutical places. Right? Everybody's in the drug business. So you can go anywhere and take this universally accepted square piece of paper with, with a signature on it and exchange it for one of these drugs. Now, don't get me wrong. Medications are fantastic. They're powerful agents. They're needed in prudent situations to uh, bump physiology and bias a little time while we continue to look for the underlying true root causes of disease which I'm going to show you here in just a second and then the problem is though is oftentimes if we have a complaint we go to the doctor doc can you give me something for this and you get the slip of paper and then of course how can that possibly work to resolve it over time um, is just beyond me because you know you don't have depression because you don't have enough Prozac right it's not that you know you're, you have <laughs> acid reflux because you're not eating enough Nexium or chewing enough you know Tums, those big fat round chalky tic tacs right that's not the reason why we do I don't have those kind of things because I'm consuming those and then when that system breaks that's okay now we're gonna really step you up uh, and that's we're gonna give you the the scalpel fix that's what we can just ah, all the organs are pretty much just optional you know <laughs> and uh, we can either you know cut them out hack them or replace or do things like that and, and right? both of those lead uh, from the, the desire to make money and most of the doctors have a reflex reaction based on the pharmaceutical you know sales rep that came by and wooed them with dinner and gifts and all sorts of stuff and then told them hey you know maybe you should check out this prescription when they when they get the the diagnosis they the reflex is oh our favorite drug of choice is yeah exactly and then after that you got the side effects so you oh, keep yeah. coming back for more oh man it's, is, a, it's, it's, drug it's, dealers. A, <laughs> it's a brilliant medical model i mean wouldn't that be awesome if we could do that oh hold on a second we do that it's like a crack dealer your first rock is yep. free right mm -hmm. well and and that becomes it so that's the that's the title of today's myth busting is that your doctor's always right well without giving the exact uh, link to the statistic uh i'll kind of talk in generalities here and then you can just kind of do your own thing you can go to centers for disease control and prevention uh website and you can look all these things up but the amount of deaths attributed at least in the United States to properly prescribed medications and surgical errors in combination we get a report every year in the American Medical Association stuff every couple of years the data is it, it, it's a it's over 300,000 people a year insane that's it, properly prescribed medication, that, right. right so what we talk of iatrogenic disease or deaths in other words they are medical error induced so guess what it is an absolute myth that your doctor is always right you always want to question always get a second opinion don't ever submit to uh, the fact that you're like well you just have to trust me because I'm board certified and things like that I personally tell my patients don't believe me because I want you to go out and absolutely require you to go and get both sides and then come to a balanced understanding. So there has to be a better way. And what's that better way? Well, of course, the, the, the system of, of, of field of medicine that I practice, which is called functional medicine, and which translates in, into ap, you know, applicable methods uh, using balanced protocol. But basically, you can look at it, you know, we use the example of a tree. It's a great thing. I know it kind of is a little cliche for some folks. But we, when we look at a tree, we really are observing how wonderful it is and judge whether we want to plant it or cultivate that based upon what kind of leaves it has and what kind of flowers and stuff it has. So up in those trees, this is where you have all your specialists, right? You have your cardiologist, your endocrinologist, your gastroenterologist, your neurologist. Remember, like I was saying, a doc for every separate body part of the body. And they don't all get together at lunch and talk about you your specific case. They're more uh, uh, centered on just the organ diagnosis and the signs and symptoms and how can we treat and suppress those. But if you really follow it down the trunk and down into the roots, you're going to pass through fundamental clinical uh, areas of imbalances that are going to manifest in all disease. It's just like depression, you can have fatigue. You know, you can have a cold and you can have fatigue. You can have PMS and have fatigue. You can have reflux and have fatigue, right? So the thing is, is there are common things that 
are, are uh, you know branch through a lot of these particular areas of how they manifest up top. I like people to be uh, what I call an, an upstreamist, right? Uh, to where we're not worried with just the downstream effects, it's upstream. Well, in plants, that upstream is down in the roots, those true causative factors. You can take twins and put one in New York City and one you know in Bali or on some deserted island and they're going to have different manifests based upon their diet their environment their levels of stress and things like that so uh, you do have a genetic predisposition to work with and we call these antecedents or things that predispose you uh, to certain imbalances uh, but just like a bomb you know does them I mean we store them in all kinds of places they don't just go off spontaneously you got to drop them from high up or shoot them out of a cannon to, you know, to do things I know that's a kind of a macabre example but in other words I I don't want people to think that they're a ticking time bomb of disease based upon their genetics and what ran in their family okay doctors will oftentimes perpetuate that type of mentality based upon how they operate um, at the end of the day you are made up of all your environmental inputs your thoughts the water you drink the air you breathe uh, the amount of sleep you get what you feed your body and all of those are going to trigger your genetic predispositions and things like that. And, and these will manifest in imbalances over time. So there definitely is a better way. Uh, and that better way is, is to remember, remember that doctors are, are people too. They should work for you. They do make mistakes. They can't know everything. And the reason why they can't know everything is because each and every one of you is a unique category of one, the proverbial snowflake. And your genetics and your unique story make you you. So you always have to filter any recommendations or quest to resolve any type of disharmony, whether it be acute but most importantly chronic disease states, through your own self. Teach your doctors and expect them to work with you and realize that it's absolutely um, encouraged to question them and respectfully say, hey, substantiate what you're telling me. Uh, unfortunately, we just can't go on the fact that, hey, listen, it's because we like them or they're a good doctor. Because like I've always said, good is the enemy to great. Though you might have a good doctor, I want you to help them become a great doctor. And the only way to do that is embrace yourself that way and demand a higher level of care. I hope this makes sense to you guys. And um, until next time, you guys live in balance. So that's all we have for this episode of Myth Busting Mondays, brought to you by Biohacker Labs. We're on a mission to open one million people's eyes to the real truth about health and optimal wellness. So please help us by sharing this podcast with family and friends. And together we can break free from all that noise and confusion and make the world a brighter place. Remember, each episode comes with a video and slides, so make sure to head over to www.biohackerlabs.com forward slash podcasts to get them as well as our show notes and some free gifts. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast to discover more dangerous health myths. We love hearing from you, so please share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have a show suggestion or want us to bust a myth, please email it to us at mythbusting at biohackerlabs.com. See you all next week with a fresh mythbusting episode.